Platelet-rich plasma injections are advertised to reduce inflammation, regenerate tissue, and heal your back pain naturally. And this makes it sound like the ideal treatment for sciatica. But a brand new meta-analysis just came out and it challenges a lot of what we thought about PRP. The findings are surprising and if you're thinking about getting a PRP injection for your back, you'll want to hear this before making a decision. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Peng here. I'm a sports medicine physician practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area and I help people manage orthopedic injuries using the latest research-backed treatments. In this video, we're diving into a brand new systematic review and meta-analysis Analysis that directly compares PRP injections to corticosteroid injections for treating lumbar radiculopathy, what most people know as sciatica. I'll break down what the study found, why it matters, and what you should know before considering PRP for your back pain. Lumbar radiculopathy is caused by compression or irritation of a spinal nerve, often due to a herniated disc or spinal stenosis. It typically results in sharp shooting pain down the leg, sometimes accompanied by numbness or weakness. Most cases improve with conservative treatment, and this includes medications, physical therapy, and even activity modification. But when symptoms persist, many spine specialists turn to epidural corticosteroid injections, and this delivers anti-inflammatory medication directly to the irritated nerve root. And while these injections can offer short-term relief, their benefits are limited, and this prompts growing interest in alternatives like platelet-rich plasma. PRP is often marketed as a regenerative treatment that taps into your body's own healing power. It's created by drawing a patient's own blood, spinning it in a centrifuge, and isolating the platelets and growth factors that are naturally circulating around in the body. These growth factors are believed to reduce inflammation and support tissue repair, including around irritated spinal nerves. And the appeal is clear. This is a natural, drug-free alternative to steroids that might do more than just mask symptoms. It might actually promote healing. PRP has shown promise in conditions like knee osteoarthritis and tendon injuries, but whether it's effective for nerve-related back pain remains unclear. That's exactly what this new meta-analysis set out to investigate. They pooled data from seven studies, including five randomized controlled trials and two prospective studies, and they compared PRP injections to corticosteroid injections for lumbar radiculopathy. In total, the analysis included over 400 patients with MRI-confirmed nerve root compression from conditions like disc herniation or spinal stenosis. The researchers looked at at two primary outcomes, pain intensity and functional disability. These outcomes were tracked at three time points, four weeks, three months, and six months post-treatment. They also recorded complication rates for both groups to assess safety. The goal was to determine not just if PRP works, but how it stacks up against the current standard of care. At the four-week mark, corticosteroid injections outperformed PRP when it came to improving function. Patients who received steroids showed significantly better ODI scores, meaning they were more mobile and less disabled in daily life. However, when it came to pain relief, there was no meaningful difference between the two treatments, neither at four weeks, three months, nor six months. Interestingly, by the six-month follow-up, PRP showed a slight trend toward better functional outcomes, but the difference was not statistically significant. As for safety, both treatments were well tolerated. Minor side effects like transient pain or mild muscle weakness were rare and resolved on their own. No serious complications were reported in either group. So what can we take away from these findings? In the short term, corticosteroid injections appear to provide faster improvements in function, making them a better option if someone needs quick relief to move and function better. PRP, on the other hand, did not perform any better than steroids in reducing pain or disability across any time point, and the small trend toward improvement at six months was not statistically significant. That said, this study was not without limitations. There was a lot of variation in how PRP was prepared, differences in platelet concentration, platelet dosing, injection volume, and technique, and this makes it hard to draw firm conclusions. Sample sizes were small, 
follow-up periods were relatively short, and not all studies were high quality. So while PRP shows potential, we need larger, more standardized trials to know if it can truly outperform steroids in the long run. So if you're dealing with sciatica and looking for fast proven relief, steroid injections are still the more reliable choice. They reduce inflammation quickly and can help restore mobility within weeks. PRP might sound appealing because it's natural and potentially regenerative, but right now the evidence does not show that it works better than steroids, especially in the short term. It's also more expensive and less accessible. It's also highly variable in how it's prepared and delivered. So if you're unable to tolerate steroids or are looking for longer term options after trying everything else, PRP may still have a role, but it's not the miracle solution some claim it to be. At least, not yet.